Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered why jellyfish even exist? Seriously, all they do is sting you and ruin your holiday. They have no brains, no blood, and they're made up of 95% water. I mean, come on, seriously, surely the world would be a much better place if we just went and eradicated every stinging tentacle in the ocean. Apparently, I'm mistaken. Our Earth Unplugged team went to speak to Wyatt Patry at Monterey Bay Aquarium just to prove me wrong. Thanks, guys. So uh, we're surrounded by some of my least favourite animals, stinging jellyfish. Why should anyone care about these guys? Right, so jellyfish are really important in the ecosystem. They eat zooplankton, and zooplankton eat phytoplankton, and then there are also animals that eat jellyfish, like turtles and sunfish. And if you take jellyfish out of that equation, you're going to have a huge imbalance. The oceans could be very, very different from what we know today. How much have we still got to find out about these guys? Uh, well, a lot. Jellies, they're so diverse and we haven't classified them all. So there's a lot of jellies out there that we don't even know about yet. And there are all these relationships that jellyfish have with other animals. Small baby fish actually hide in the tentacles and the oral arms of the jellies and use them for protection. The fish are actually using the mucus of the jellyfish to make themselves immune to the sting. I mean, you see in the news a lot that there's these huge jellyfish swarms. You see them washing up on beaches. Right. And what's your take on that? Those jellies are there for a reason. You know, the conditions were right for those jellies to bloom. And whether that was the right temperature or enough food, are the jellyfish out competing other animals for food? We have all these areas where we've depleted the ocean of the major fish predators, so all their larvae aren't there anymore. So someone's got to eat all that plankton, and it's going to be those jellyfish. Uh, so why, if I get stung by a jellyfish, should I get a mate of mine to wee on me? I would not do that. <laughs> The best relief for a jellyfish sting is gonna be extremely hot water. So just below scalding, that's gonna denature that venom. So it's gonna stop hurting you. That'll be the fastest way to alleviate pain. And how do these stings actually work? Jellies have tentacles, which we all see. In these tentacles, there are just millions of stinging cells called nematocysts. And these nematocysts have harpoons in them. And when that contacts another cell, like our cells, our skin, it fires that harpoon into us, and so you've got millions of these little needles or harpoons shooting into your skin and releasing that venom. And that's causing that pain. Yeah. And in terms of the pain, I mean, are there some that are really bad stingers and some that are all right? So there's two box jelly species in Australia that are particularly nasty. That's the Chironex flecari, the large box jellyfish, and then the small Irukandji box jelly, really tiny. These two jellies have such strong stings that one of them can kill you and the other one can put you in the hospital for a couple weeks with convulsions, cramps, and just terrible pain. Yeah. And what about these guys beneath us? These are the Hawaiian moon jellies. Right. Their sting is so light and our skin is so thick that we just really don't feel their sting much at all. So I can give it a go? Yeah, go ahead and get, you can touch the tentacles directly. Yeah, I found it cool thing. You can kind of see they stick to you a little bit. I just think that's where the harpoons are firing in, but right, right. They get so all those, right, all those harpoons are, are grabbing onto you, but you're not feeling anything. It's yeah. just not strong enough. In your face, jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> Click on the jellyfish to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Earth Unplugged. There we go. So this one looks like it's slightly different. Is this is this a different species?